Hello all, this is Sean Dermody and I'm going to be talking today for my final project about predictive analytics and their uses in higher education. Predictive analytics is a timely and appropriate topic because higher education is facing mounting pressures from the public, lawmakers, regulators, and other influential voices to increase its effectiveness. There are those who look at higher education and see it as inefficient and certainly look at the inability of higher education to increase student success outcomes and calling upon higher education to become more effective. In many ways, casting doubt on higher education as never before. As higher education faces these mounting pressures, it's looking inwards to look and find ways to become more effective and more efficient to increase its assessment of itself and to guide choices to ensure that certain outcomes are reached. All of these depend upon data collection. And what we're seeing is, is that higher educational institutions are becoming very effective at collecting data and becoming centers of big data. Yet, collecting data is not enough. Data collection is one thing. Using that data to inform institutional decision making is another matter altogether. Predictive analytics, as this definition shows, is an area of statistical analysis that deals with extracting information to uncover patterns that can be used to predict behavior and events. So extracting information to find patterns to predict behavior and events, that is the core of predictive analytics. Where, while this is a new area to higher education, it's certainly not a new area. Um, businesses have been doing this for years. Go to Amazon.com, go to Netflix, look at the recommended movies or books. Th those are based off pr predictive analytics. There was a great story a couple of years ago about uh, a, a young girl whose father was upset that Target knew that his daughter was pregnant before sh he did because of her shopping habits. Um, so again, this is not a new area, yet higher education has been more concerned historically with collecting data, processing it, and reporting it than really using it for good institutional decision making. Yet, as pressures increase, colleges are going to be forced to move in this direction. Higher education has found a number of uses of predictive analytics, um, certainly in recruitment and marketing of students what types of students are most likely to enroll and should we target those ones. Financial planning, um, which degree programs are going to become more popular in the future versus less popular so we make faculty hiring decisions that are appropriate. Alumni donor tracking, which type of our current students right now are most likely to donate when they graduate and what can we do to build a connection with them now so that we're more likely to maintain that connection for the rest of their lives. And finally, student retention and success. There's a lot, a lot of really interesting work that's occurring right now with student retention and student success. Um, it's just fascinating stuff, and I'll be talking a little bit more about some of that later. This graph reinforces that point that higher education leaders are seeing a variety of benefits to predictive analytics ranging from student success to resources to recruiting students. There are a lot of exciting initiatives going on with predictive analytics and student success, and I, I can't unfortunately get into all of them right now, but I'm going to pick out one of these. Uh, the degree compass system being used at Austin PA State College. It's basically a system that looks for historic trends of student successes in various courses. And as students go to register for courses, it looks at all of their options to fulfill their degree requirements and then rates those courses with how successful the system thinks the student might be. And it's a way to begin a conversation with the advisor and the student for predicting 
uh, for helping them to understand what is the best course for them to take to be successful. And the system has led to increased retention rates and has actually closed the achievement gap between African American and white uh, students. So it's, it's an exciting initiative. Being a nascent field, predictive analytics has not yet developed widespread best practices. Yet in reviewing the literature, I found a couple of common themes that I'm going to approach. One of them is what one of the researchers calls the four rights. Making sure you have the right infrastructure, data, people, and the, you're doing it the right way. It also speaks to the importance of having a, an institution-wide and top-down commitment to ensure resources are in place. Um, there's a focus on integrating analysis with choices that you provide to students. So for example, providing students with meaningful choices that lead to desired outcomes of student growth and success. Um, partnerships are emphasized greatly, ensuring that uh, working with other institutions to benchmark predictive analytics. And then framing. For example, when talking to students, not framing in terms of we think you're going to be a success, but here's some steps we need to do and some interventions to ensure that you're going to be successful. The research also speaks to the challenges and obstacles that institutions face in bringing in predictive analytics. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'm going to touch upon number six and seven. The first is, is that there's danger in us profiling students, particularly those who may be correlated with the least successful students, that we create a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's a lot of research that shows that if teachers believe that a student is not going to be successful, that they're not going to be successful. So we have to ensure that the system doesn't lead to more self-fulfilling prophecies. And you know, the other and last point is, as we create more information, we create, we run the danger of losing information, losing something valuable as the needle in the haystack. So we have to continue to approach predictive analytics with a focus on what are the key questions and information we need to know in order to become more successful. Ultimately though, it's my belief that predictive analytics are a powerful tool. That if we use them properly, they will allow us to become more effective and lead to improved student success. If we, can, if we can make decisions based on the data we've collected that will help our students to be more successful, that will lead us to being more effective and efficient in providing those services, then I think we're going to be in much better places dealing with a skeptical public in the future. So that's my presentation. There's a little bit on my my resources, um, but I wanted to thank you for reviewing this and also for a great semester.